Why this feel right, Jim? Uh, that's a good question. I, I just want to reiterate, we went through a um, pretty exhaustive process and um, looked at everything from references to the person's career, obviously interview plays a part. It was a little unique in that we interviewed Kevin last year and inter actually interviewed him twice, so we got to know him really well. And when we sat down with him again on Thursday night, and spent four or five hours together and coupled that with his references that I alluded to earlier when I introduced him. Just we were really comfortable with him. We had some outstanding people who had the opportunity to spend time with, but just it felt right with Kevin. So we're very excited. Was there something that uh, made you like him more this year than last year? I can't say that. Um, I do think, and Kevin would tell you this, the year somebody asked the question, the year calling plays, and, and he said that. He obviously grew in that time period, just like he'll grow this first year as a head coach. But we just felt really comfortable with him. Um, our entire group did. And like I said, we spent time with him last year. And the time as an offensive coordinator, I think, did benefit him. Jimmy, what makes you think he's the big time leader that you guys are looking for in this position? I'll just reiterate what I said. I mean, we spent time with him last year, time with him this year. And I can't, we probably had 25, 30 references on each of the candidates. We really involved our entire operation in it. And Kevin's references were outstanding across the board from a wide variety of people that have known him for, you know, players, former players, coaches, former coaches, and including Gary Kubiak, who could not have sp spoken highly, more highly of Kevin. So we felt really good about um, those references. When you spoke on January 2nd, did you learn anything new about him that that's a good question, Tony. I don't think anything startling new. I think the, I'll just repeat what I said, the year calling plays, and, and Kevin said this, and Kevin is, you'll find very, there's a great deal of humility, and he admitted, he said, hey, I made a bad call here. I learned from this experience. You could tell he had learned from the year of calling plays, and, and that benefited him. You spoke of alignment on January 2nd. That was one of your key focal points. Um, why does Kevin fit? into that alignment so well that you spoke about? Or how well, does he fit, I should Yeah, say. I think you all got a feel for the person today a little bit, and he's really bright, okay? He has, listen, all of us have a little bit of ego, but has almost no ego, and I think his answer on calling plays is all you need to know, right? Uh, his answer was whatever's best for the Cleveland Browns. And if I happen to be the best play caller, I'll do it. And if there's somebody better, then I'll let them do it. And I think that typifies his mindset in terms of working together. And I think you'll see that in personnel. Jimmy, is there any concern? You're kind of going down the same way you went down a little bit last year. Offensive coordinator, no head coaching experience. Is there a concern that he has no head coaching experience and where this experiment might go? No, we, we feel very confident, very confident. Jimmy, did you address some, there's some rumors out there, reports out there. First off, that uh, Kevin's going to have to meet with you on uh, Mondays after the game. Is there uh, truth to that one? Well, let me ask you, if you owned a pro football team, would you meet with the head coach the, uh, Monday after the game? Of course you would. I mean, of course we would. The rumors out there, though, about presenting the game plan and those kind are just totally inaccurate, and I, I really think they're irresponsible. I really about, do. Then how about the one where uh, an analytics guy is going to be on the headphone with a coach on the sideline during the game? Does that one help? Well, well I, I think if you went across the spectrum in the NFL, it's pretty common to have somebody in the booth helping you decide when to call timeout, when to go for it, et cetera. And so I don't think that's anything. We haven't talked exactly with Kevin how we'll work it, but that's not anything that's, like, real unique. To clarify, that you've always met with the co your coaches Absolutely. on Mondays, right? Absolutely. Okay. And they're 30 to minute to an hour meeting, and I dare say we don't discuss a lot different than the questions you all would ask him if you came to the game. It's, it's, it's not a lot different than that. And Hugh, Hugh used to talk about an analyst guy on the headset with – with him all exactly. Time. I mean, so that's that that's just too. a way of, if you if you think about the pressure on a head coach, and particularly if they call plays, and how focused they have to be on the game, to have somebody up there whose sole job is to say, hey, you ought to call timeout here. You shouldn't call timeout. Hey, this is a good place to punt or to go for it, not go for it. You know, are you going to play four downs here or three downs? Any smart person would rely on that. So that is not atypical for the Cleveland Browns. Jimmy, 
Yeah, the fair question. I just, I'll just reiterate what I said earlier. We spent a lot of time with Kevin. His references were, were outstanding. Uh, we feel very comfortable with him. I think you all, I'm repeating what I said, you all got a good feel for the man today, and we're highly confident that he'll be our coach for a long time. Jimmy, how do you convince a young coach coming in here or whatever, give him, like you said, the first time to coach, you're going to give him some time. Because well, I don't care how talented a rookie coach is, he's still a rookie coach. Yeah, I mean, I think Kevin answered it. I think he got to know us. He sees our roster. Um, and I will say this, I think Baker was given a hard time, I will say, this year by a lot of people. Uh, we talked to eight head coaches, some of them offensive, some of them defensive, and uh, their comments in terms of his ability to play quarterback were all outstanding. Now, Baker's like all of us. He can get better, um, and he has some things to work on, but the confidence in when these outsiders looking at our team and particularly looking at Baker was outstanding. So I just think we feel good about going forward. Um, we did not have a bent toward offense or defense. The best, the bent was to find the best leader. Obviously it helps that Kevin has, if you look at Kevin's record, we, we looked at a lot of facts, but go back and look at 2017 and what he did with Case Keenum, Terry, and then look at what he's done with Cousins in 18 and 19. We actually talked to Case Keenum. Uh, et cetera, talk to cousins. So the feedback there was really good, and I think he'll be a big help to Baker, which I think we all know how important that is for the team. Just to follow on your point with Baker, so you mentioned like even uh, I think the other press conference that he was in some tough positions last year in terms of whether it's scheme or whatever to get going. How do you get him straightened out? Well, that's Kevin's job, okay? Yeah. It's obviously not, not ours. I think it's Kevin's job, and I think Kevin talked about putting him in position to, first he said easier and then caught himself because there are no easy plays in the NFL, but to make some easier throws and easier plays. Jimmy, Jimmy, Two more leader? here, we're gonna wrap. What makes him a good leader? Oh, smart, um, very comfortable with himself. I mean, think about it, uh, he's really never met any of you all today and you guys throw tough questions and I think he handled them well. I think he's smart, I think he handles himself very well. I think he's very comfortable with himself. I think he's open to learning. Um, we actually have shared a couple of just small things we learned from other coaches and it wasn't, well, I'd never do that, was, hey, that's an interesting idea. We ought to think about it. So I think you couple those things together, we feel good we got the right guy. Two weeks ago, Paul role was not going to change with right. the organization. Right. He's still going to do what he's been doing. Right. Um, him, though, working remotely as often as he does, has been over the years with him. Uh, the perception that he's second guessing from afar, he's not in the building every day, and, and that. Can you just maybe clarify for people his role, how that all operates and works? And again, the, you know, the perception that he's always in your ear and, 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 and those type of things. Well, I think you all are going to have the opportunity to talk to Paul so you can ask him that. But I think from our perception, I'd say what I said 12 days ago Paul is a very smart guy. Um, and the fact that he's not there every day, I don't, I don't think makes a huge difference. You know what I mean? He's there more days than he's not. Um, he's a great contributor. His role remained the same. And Paul's going to do everything that he can to make the head coach and the general manager, once we select that person, successful. So we feel really good about Paul's role and his ability to affect the organization. Jimmy, Jimmy on, us, on, Jimmy, on, on Saturday, um, it, it became apparent that um, you know, Kevin Stefanski and Robert Sala were, were were right there in the running for you guys because of the, you know, there were some GM requests made that obviously aligned with those guys. Um, can you speak about um, this, the search and was it narrowed to those two guys? And also a second part to that is, um, this is no disrespect to Kevin, but just a lot of people around here were excited about Josh McDaniels' candidacy because he is a hometown guy. He has a six six Super Bowls with the Patriots. So your fans, your you know, want to know uh, why not Josh McDaniels? Yeah, let me say this. Um, I think it'd be unfair to say we've narrowed it down to four or three or two. I don't think that would be fair. I do say this. I think it's important to understand. We knew by we interviewed Josh was our final candidate Friday night. 
we were going to meet Saturday and Sunday as long as it takes, but we knew the end was in sight. And so it just made sense to start putting out requests to talk to these GMs because there's a process you have to go through. So I know you all were all reading, well, George Payton, he's connected to Sysfansky or somebody's connected to whomever. That, that, that was just setting the process up in an organized manner because you have to request, the team has to okay it, then you have to set them up to visit. So that was just part of the organized process that we'd go through. And I think it's unfair to comment on any of the coaches. All of them are very good coaches. We learned a lot from all of them. And it was actually a, somebody called me on Saturday and you said, you, are you glad that was done? And it was actually a very enjoyable experience. If you think about the breadth of experience, offensive, defenses, former head coaches, et cetera. We learned, JW, Paul and myself learned a tremendous amount, Coop, going through that experience. Jimmy, Mary Kay, Mary Kay, last one, Mary Kay, last one. Jimmy, if you're able to bring Andrew Berry back into the fold, what are some things that you really like about Andrew and why would that be great for this Yeah, I think it's, it would be unfair to Andrew and any of the other candidates to comment on them right now. I'll say this, we, we're, we have begun the GM process. We'll work through it just like we are the coach process. The only difference is Kevin will be involved with us. So the search committee goes from four members to five. And I don't want to say how long it's going to take. The important thing is to get it right. So we're going to focus on that. Jimmy, okay, yeah. Jim, Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy, go ahead and then we'll get done. I would imagine this comes up when you're interviewing these coaching candidates because they take a look at your roster. So is this a rebuild or is it a change? No, I don't, not, not one person we talked to thought this was a rebuild. I mean, we have a good core group. I said this the other day. If you think JW and I talked to probably 25 or 30 players before they left, and if you ask our main impression, one of them was it's a really young team. I mean, if you think about Holt Baker, I mean, I think I said in the press conference, Jarvis and Odell are the old guys, and they're 27. So we have a really good core group of young players that we think we can build around. This All is right, really thanks. the last one, Pat. Go, right, last Pat. one. The Fritz Pollard Alliance released a pretty strong yeah. and critical statement yeah. about yeah. diversity hiring. As yeah. an owner, what, what do you think the league can do? What can be done? You know, I can't address what the league can do. I can just address what we have, Pat, and I think our record in diversity hiring is pretty strong. And we've been really strong uh, supporters of the Fritz Pollard Association. Uh, John Wooden, who used to run it, is a great, as you know, a former Brown, a great friend of ours. We talk to him frequently. And I actually think Kevin addressed it very well. As an organization, we need to be conscious of who we're hiring at all positions. And there's particular concern on the offensive side of the ball. And you heard what they did at Minnesota. So I think following in that kind of track makes sense. <laughs>